But hey guys, what's up? Matt here. Another episode of Coffee is for Closers, me and James today. And what we're going to be talking about is the masterclass that we just finished, kind of wrapped it all up. We should be, we're still receiving some payments, but essentially in about three hours that closes down. So what we're going to do is go over, I guess, uh, the successes that we had, things that we could have been done better. And I guess for all of you who are sales guys out there, we're going to be talking about the nitty gritty sales stuff that me and Jeremy did. And for all you business owners, we're going to be talking about how we collected about $300,000 cash and did about, I think over half a million dollars in revenue from a three-day event. So. So uh, cue the intro. If you listen to this podcast, you will make your first million within three years. I'm going to repeat that. You will make a million dollars within three years of the first episode you listen to. We don't want pikers. We're not here to save the manatees. We're here to make podcasts. You really want this. You listen and review. Put that coffee down you know despite all of the uh the sales and, and income that we generated i think like the most valuable thing that i got out of this whole thing was in uh, that facebook group we finally got some recognition on a compliment that we are the best at memes and uh that meant more to me than it's all about the money it we really is <laughs> we live the meme life yeah, no, hey, we Drewby. had some uh, We're coming for you. We're coming for you, Drewby. Yeah, no, it was really interesting. Hey, it was like the first time that we've done it. Jeremy did one before, like to launch NEPQ. I guess, I mean, NEPQ has been around for a long time, but to launch the business. So, those of you who don't know, like Seventh Level, like we own a part of Seventh Level, like a pretty good chunk. And then we run the business, and Jeremy's like the figurehead, head trainer, all that kind of stuff. But before we came along, like it was maybe doing 50 grand a month, 40, mm, something that. like that. It was sort of doing, I think it like it might have cracked a million dollars for the year, but I don't think so. So, and then within seven months or within eight months now, just hit air with seventh level just by itself, we just hit $700,000 collected US for the month. Yeah. So we should hit about $730,000 US for the month, which is great. And we're continuing to grow month on month, which is James just said, but in Garwald Gobbledygook because of his internet, it's about a million dollars Australian. So we're definitely on track to do 20, to do about 25 to $30 million between the umbrella company. For those of you who don't know, like Sales Sniper and seventh level work pretty intimately together, essentially. It's like two arms of the same person. So mm. one is the sales training side. Like we don't really do any sales training here at Sales Sniper. It's all done through seventh level. And seventh level doesn't do any like done for you or consulting. It's all done through sales sniper, right? So yeah. that's kind of that's kind of how it works. It's a bit of a two-way street because we thought about doing coaching as well, but then we just decided to run it all through seventh level because like the infrastructure is there. You know, just for you guys who are now we on board about 150 new students every single month through seventh level as a coaching company. Pretty large. We have an onboarding sequence. Uh, everyone's onboarded within three hours of buying. And me as the CEO of the company, I don't notice any of it. And that's a good thing. He is the COO and that notices everything. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, like, it's pretty seamless, man. Like, for guys who just like, we just made up a coaching company, and then seven months later, we're doing over seven hundred thousand dollars a month, like, without like, any think, of the uh, coaching courses and yeah. masterminds that you typically go into as a, a coach who coaches coaches. Yeah, coach but we coaches. don't. I mean, yeah, we do. We don't. We don't coach coaches that coach coaches that coach, right? We just kind teach of teach them do how it. to sell yeah. coaches. So we do coach sales coaches. coaching, and then we do done for you. Yeah, right. So we could for sure become a business coaching organization, but hmm. I think that would be um, really. Really, really boring. Yeah, I guess we would just be in the same boat as everyone else that was in sales that transitioned into that with limited business experience. But yeah, so I think like, let's go through like lessons learned. So hmm. all up uh, in the three days, we did about 180 sales. I would say by the time it closes with the last minute emails and stuff that we have going out, I would say it'd be very close to 200 sales. We had 1200 people in the group. Now, obviously a lot of those people were already paying customers. They just wanted to be part of the masterclass. Yep. But just for you guys to realize we had on day one, we we had 500 people join mm -hmm. on day two we had about 420 people join on day three we had about 390 which is just, just shy of 400 right which is when we pitched and then over the subsequent 72 hours we had 200 people buy we also ran the the on call which was um not really planned in advance and did a, an extra session the following day because uh, we took too long to get the information that we wanted out and we're really just enjoying presenting and spoke longer than well and truly longer than what we were planning on. So needed another day for some Q&A and whatnot. Absolutely. I'll just get the numbers up now. This week, we've done $341,000. So from the 23rd to the 29th, that's in seventh level. I don't know if you can there see that. Well, I can refresh that, see how it's real. Anyway, so yeah, $341,000 in six days. Yeah, I just switched my notifications off on um, 
the specific sales channels within Slack. So it's just going ping, 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 ping. Yeah. So like, let's kind of break down, like, what can we learn from this? First of all, from me, like, I think in the previous podcast, we talked about how, like, we just finished the first day, I believe, and was going really well and kind of the setting up. So I think what I learned is that like, definitely like that hype man role is super important. So the role that I took on uh, of like, kind of being like the narrator for the audience was, was really important. And like, it's the first time in a long time that I've really sat down and like really, really rigorously planned something. Like, I think I had, by the end of it, it was about 18 pages of script that I had to go through. And then it was kind of being adjusted every night based off what I thought was working and what wasn't. I took a lot of cues from people like Eli Wilde and Brad Newman, and then sort of like tried to kind of make it my own. But yeah, like there's a lot of pre-seeding, seeding uh, that has to be done, us versus them mentality that has to be brought in, right? Because you want the people who to kind of be in a frenzy by the time they buy, right? And then there was the pitch, right? So kind of seed everything. And Jeremy's job is not really to sell until the very last day. And I do all the sort of quote unquote selling, building the urgency and, and sort of set up Jeremy to be able to pitch, right? Because we want to sort of, you almost want to disguise the pitch as a bit of like, I mean, it's very open. It's like, hey, if you guys are open, we can take you through kind of what some experiences of some of our clients have and how any PQ can help you, right? So I was really surprised, man. Like we had about 360 people on when we pitched and like nearly everybody stayed for the entire pitch and the pitch went for 37 minutes yeah it's a long pitch yeah so it's kind of that long though no jeremy did a fantastic job of like bringing me in and out um Mm -hmm. and asking for feedback doing stuff in the chat to keep it engaged but sort of planned it out to down to the minute like i knew it was going to take almost exactly 37 minutes i even texted you i was like hey we're about to pitch you can have a break. This is going to take 37 minutes. <laughs> right. So I would um, like to have a break, but it was just too interesting outside of going to get you a coffee so you can perform. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, the break I had. Yeah. But, but it's like, so one of the things that I found really interesting was like, sort of like how infomercially it had to be mm. right now. It was a really, really successful pitch, right? So, but if you would have sent me that slide deck, I would have been like, oh, this is way too much. Yep. Yep. But having seen it played through, I was like, oh, I get it, right? Because you're sort of like, the whole point is to answer every question, overcome every objection, and constantly and persistently remind of the value that you're giving somebody. Hmm. So the whole like infomercial old school, but wait, there's more. There's a reason why that format was adopted. Yeah. Yeah. And I've not seen that done off the back of like a lot. Well, sorry, I've seen that done. I've not seen that done well before with many things that I've been on and been pitched to and to to be honest like my uh, level of respect, the way to go yeah my level of respect for jeremy went went through the roof not that i didn't have a high level of one to begin with but seeing him i've never seen him pitch like that to a different audience on something that he doesn't specialize in because he's specialized in more the one-to-one type sale as opposed to the one-to-many but yeah, seeing man. him come into he that role it. and Every time, you know, I've watched him do this sort of thing before, he gets better and better the more people that come on. And I just went, wow, you took that to another level. That was awesome. And yeah. it, was, it was really good to see from not only if you weren't there to be pitched, but just to see someone pitch in action, like that was almost worth the value of buying the course, right? Yeah, exactly. So it was super interesting. We had a great deal. We basically had a 50% off sale for our NEPQ 2.0 program, which is like our virtual training platform that we use on Lightspeed. I think it's one of our best products to sell because like there's no delivery attached to it. It's all inside the portal. So like for me as like one of the business owners, I love selling it because like it's infinitely scalable. Mm-hmm. It's got a good profit margin for us, but it's a phenomenal product for the for the person. The yeah. And it's the big, it's the start of the big upsell chain, right? So we have Ascension model. Basically, how we sell is we have like we have like four programs. So we have any PQ 2.0, any PQ 3.0, inner circle, and now we have like an inner circle plus, right? And and essentially like inner circle and inner circle plus, like they're not scalable entities. Like they're high revenue generators, but it's not like like you get access to Voxer with Jeremy at least in its current iteration, it's like that is just not, not feasible for 700 or 800 people, right? Like yeah, yeah, it yeah. caps out at cap. about 100, you know? And Jeremy, for the first time, came to me saying like, oh man, it's getting pretty busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you know, we do? and, and, and wow. that was, and that program was only started uh, eight months ago. So it started in, no, it was a year ago. It started in August, I think of last year. So it's been a full year. It was definitely um, there before we came on board. There was just. No, I sold no the very first yet. inner circle. Oh, okay. I'll take that back then. Yeah. Like I was the guy, who, like, like I created the program because I had bought, I had bought 
before that they were only selling the platform right oh uh, yeah and yeah, then yeah, and then yeah, i right. bought the one-to-one and i said guys we yeah. can't sell this as our main product yeah. like it's unscalable and it's really expensive it was forty thousand dollars for the year and you got four sessions like it was plus voxer like it was just not going to be a super appetizing product for the marketplace yeah so yeah so i think we have well, well over 100 people right now i think we have uh, just uh, just over 100 people right now in inner circle i think we have about 150 in 3.0 and then we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in 2.0 and uh, um, about 3,500 testimonials, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is awesome that we've 30, yeah, 30, I think it's 3,650 or something testimonial. Our testimonial page on the seventh of the website is nuts. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's got hundreds on there. Hundreds just boom, 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 boom. And uh, we don't just pick the best ones either because oh, we don't even, they're all we amazing. Just, yeah. We just we just put random ones in there because otherwise like who's got time to watch all the testimonials yeah i don't yeah one day the other day we got 16 testimonials in the facebook group without asking yeah it's crazy in one day yeah it's good it, it's, it's phenomenal training i haven't got a bad thing to say about it obviously because it's ours but mm. like i went through it and it changed everything you know? yeah but I, I tell other people even competitors they have a good program if they do yeah yeah yeah. yeah, so but dude, seven it's fucking crazy. Anyway, that's enough on Jeremy's dick. But yeah, so, yeah. Some of the techniques, like I, I felt like the biggest thing that, that he got right and sort of really really changed things was like the stage presence. Yeah, man. He was a different beast this time yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so you I, 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 I as well. Yeah, you gotta kind of like turn your personality up to eleven because like you've gotta kind of like exaggerate things, mm. you know? Not in terms of results, but I mean in terms of like emotion. Yeah. You know, so it's hard when you're having a one on one conversation with somebody it's easy to kind of just have a really chilled conversation but when you're you're trying to speak to 500 people at once like you've got to kind of like just dial everything up you know um and so that was hard because me and jeremy neither of us are kind of like that you know we're both relatively chilled people so both of us had to sort of make an active thing make an active sort of thought process to do that and it ruined me at the end of each day like being that like so much hey guys what's up fire in the chat doing that for hours at a time i was just like i got home i didn't want to speak to anybody i was like everyone mm. leave me alone <laughs> mm. yeah not and that stacked up on the couch and my kids were not sleeping yeah it, it was kind of like as a, like a musician right you're not that i am you you're playing your guitar in the back room just for yourself and then you get on stage at the biggest concert you know at live aid or something like mm. that you got to take that skill set set up you know and it, it sort of brings out something in you i thought that was really interesting i thought the uh the dynamic was really interesting between you two because for for once you know for the first time i've really seen you take the the back seat and uh not be the the guy in the front he's just destroyed your dominant personality ah. it's it really interesting seeing you, you play second fiddle which is uh doesn't happen often no it was good though but well, the whole point of that business is like jeremy's the guy yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I tell people this, like in sales sniper, I'm the guy, but that's fine. But in seventh level, Jeremy's got to be the guy. Yeah, I agree. It's the role that he needs to play. Listen, in certain demographics, like if we break it down to young sales guy, older sales guy, then I'll need to be the guy for the young sales guy. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, that's just kind of how it's going to be. But like he, or yeah, or Marco, even better, you know, to be honest, he's 26, right? So 27. So yeah, like I just think everyone's got a role to play and the the role, I, I, I'm in this to make the most amount of money possible. <laughs> Right. Like, you know, like, you know, I want to sell the training, but I'm, uh, that kind of came out wrong. I'm not in business to feed the ego. I'm in business to feed the bank account. To, to be a business, like the whole purpose yeah. of the business is to make money. If you're not yeah. making money in a business, it's a hobby. Yeah. And like, I, I do so much content for Sales Sniper. I don't want to have to do that for seventh level. Yeah. Like seventh level gives us like from a financial, it gives us like a, it's a f- phenomenal backup play and I, they're both front of mind for me but like and then sales sniper is a great backup play for seventh level like it gives us a lot of redundancy mm. the fact that like we can have a phenomenal month at sales sniper and maybe we have a down month at seventh level and we could make that cash flow work and mm. then vice versa like if i needed to loan a hundred thousand dollars from seventh level into sales sniper to cover bills because of a f- black swan event where the banks decide to not release money right then we could do that it wouldn't yeah. be a problem you know so like for me keeping the entities separate but the same is like it, it gives us a level of uh it's really really good from a business standpoint to have yeah, not that's how holding companies were. so i like i love it like and i i'm super passionate about seventh level like i think it's a phenomenal phenomenal company and to be honest my holdings in seventh level are almost identical to my holdings in sales sniper in mm, terms yeah. of like how much equity i personally have yeah to be close yeah so yeah man like it, it was really it was really interesting well so 
also like the fact that, you know, I was looking, I was, we recently won an award, which I won't say yet. Anyway, it's a really good award to win. Mm. Um, and I was having to do like explain the business and that kind of stuff. And it was quite interesting. And it was like, how is, what's been the evolution of where have you guys come from? And I was like, man like we've done this in two years yeah it's crazy the period of time like we coach people that spend you know six to ten years in business aiming to get that that award and still can't do it yeah it's a tough one to get not even the smaller one you know it's, it's crazy yeah, i just gave it away no, i'm just kidding <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> well technically we didn't say anything no comment yeah, exactly but yeah, so like, it's been super interesting, like how the snowball effect of seventh level and sales sniper working together, I think is, has happened, you know, we're feeding clients in both directions. We could easily have a three or $400,000 month coaching business on top of what we have, but we, we could pretty much palmed it all up to seventh level because I believe that that training system is the best and we could try and we have our own training system for internal people, but our own training system is for our internal people. And it's very specific to an industry targets. Things are very different. Yeah. But it's also like, it's for coaching and consulting, right. And for a couple of other things. And I think it provides a great framework, but essentially all of our stuff is very specific to certain niches, fitness, coaching, consulting, maybe some other stuff like that, but that's really where sales sniper sits in terms of like a methodology. And this is where like during this masterclass, I realized that's why this is why we are growing so much faster at seventh level than everybody else as our that selling system works for literally everyone. It's incredible. So it's like we had door knockers. There are people door knocking, cold calling, coaching and consulting, water filtration systems, solar alarm medical systems, device. medical device sales. There are car salesmen. And like the people that were on there were selling everything network more like everything whereas like if you go into like traffic and funnels they're selling to coaches and consultants and closers who didn't like dan blocks right mm. so i was like man i was like the potential of this business is limitless because i would say like there was a while there where seventh level was really leveraged against coaching and consulting because sales sniper was boosting it up yeah, right because we have a good name within station. there you know what i mean but now like seventh level like man there's heaps of pharmaceutical reps and it's just like one in every eight employed employees is, is in a sales role. Mm. And I was like, man, like we can, that's why Cardone's big, right? Cardone doesn't specialize in anything. It's just sales. And then you have other companies like say sales mentor and that kind of stuff. And like that, it really is very specifically around high ticket closing, which is a big market, but it's nowhere near as the size that like say pharmaceutical sales is. So it's nowhere near the size that say car sales is. Crystal ball, 10 years, what company's bigger? Sniper, seventh level. Well, this is all dependent on a few things, Jimothy. Such so, as. well, mergers and acquisitions. Yeah, that's where I think Sniper beats out tenfold. Yeah, so I think that like as a pure coaching company in 10 years, seventh level will be doing 100 million, mm -hmm. right? I think it can get there because Sandler does more than that. They do hundreds it's of possible. millions a year. I, I think it can be done, especially when we start getting large corporate contracts for four or $5 million a year, right? But I think I think 100 million a year is completely reasonable. But I think Sales Sniper can do much more than that because like some of the plans that we have in place, we'll be doing sales of 30 and $50 million. Yeah. And we'll be doing a few of those a year. So it's like- like, We've got so many more assets in that company and we can acquire assets at a quicker rate and utilize them better. Yeah. So do I, it'll be hard to say, man, but I, I think Sales Sniper will probably have, but it'll be a far more of like a convoluted business. Oh, for sure. So uh, yeah, in Sales Sniper will terms. look nothing like what it does right now in 10 years. Oh yeah, absolutely. If we even own it. <laughs> yeah. We, we still got to figure out the sale number <laughs> and be like, yeah. Offer this by because <laughs> yeah. what, what could be a good move, and again, this is all just extemporaneous talking, is like sell sales sniper and then put a bunch of money into seventh level, mm -hmm. right? Because like you could sell sales snipers, let's say with some of the stuff you do a massive sellout, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. You just you use go. that to fund seventh level to go into like yeah, the you heavy put, B2B put market. Yeah. Fifty million dollars into seventh level and you go, all right, let's make Jeremy the most famous sales guy on the planet. Mm -hmm. You know? So anyway, there's lots of ways that you can do that. And he would happily take that role. So yeah. many different ways, some of the plans that we have with some of the acquisitions that we've made and with some of the acquisitions that we have planned. And then, um, yeah, there's lots of different ways that you can do this, man. It's just to see what happens. Coaching and consulting right now is a phenomenal place to be. I'm super happy to be here and mm. we will uh, figure out what to do next. But yeah, wrapping up, I think like this is really taking a random turn. I apologize. The, this is your first time listening. I apologize. This is a random What's the, the best thing that you, what's the biggest thing you've learned watching Jeremy pitch that can be translated to our listeners? I think that my perception of what a good pitch was changed. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, like, and 
the start, it really, to me, like, because if you're pitching like one-on-one, your pitch should be no more than 10% of the length of the call or the process. So let's say you do three calls and they're all an hour. That's three hours. You can do it. You can do, you know, an 18 minute pitch, 18 to 20 minutes, right? If you do a one call close and it's an hour, your pitch should be like six, seven minutes, right? But we did a 37 minute pitch, which really then to me, it was like, okay, there's a huge difference between stage selling and one-on-one selling. Yeah. It's like enormous. Because if you did that pitch one-on-one, that person would be like, what, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. yeah. Well, because you wouldn't need to. Yeah. There's no, on the, the stage pitch, you're not getting people tell you the objections to handle them. You yeah. have to handle them in other ways. So just to me, it really emphasized the fact that like, Selling on stage and selling in person are vastly different skill sets. You can be good at both, but the principles of stage selling, they are very little on the principles of one-on-one sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like to me anyway, like I think they're just totally different. And the more I do it and I, and I'm sure that we'll, we'll I'm sure that we'll do a few more of the, I think we plan on doing two a year, right? If we can pull that $300,000 twice a year, that's 600 grand plus all the upsells, you know? So now my job and our job is to calculate what were the upsells and the LVTs. So it's like, we might end up having a $10,000 LVT for everybody who buys hmm. at a Great event, idea. you know? So it's like, all right, cool. We know that over a 12 month period, we get this much time. It's like, if we get this many people in the group, this many people in the webinar, this many people will buy this much cash up front, this much ongoing revenue. This is the LVT. It's like, sweet. Let's just get 5,000 people into a Facebook group and Bob's your uncle. We'll make a million dollars. Yeah. We can hit our revenue targets by our reverse engineering the KPIs. That's yeah. that's pretty simple. Yeah. But yeah, that was what I learned the most. How about you? What did you learn the most? Oh, I, I think it was like the perception as well. Pretty much the same thing as yours. Like I, I see the difference, the, the reality of like the pitch and everything like that and how that really ties into the branding, the long-term branding of how we do things. And it was perfectly portrayed in the way that it needs to be portrayed. Really the, the biggest thing outside of actual learning stuff about pitches the massive support that we have that people enjoy our products and, and love it you know oh we had man a, people we had just a, posted up like crazy oh yes like and we had a troll on there and everyone was i, I had to hide some of the posts of some of our clients because they were a bit aggressive oh yeah <laughs> like hey guys if you don't buy this you're fucking morons i was like hide yeah it's um i was but, like i appreciate the support but they're not they're just, just not ready yet it. like i still want it like it's fine you know <laughs> like, it, like it you were the guy that said that when gave us the same objections <laughs> exactly so, it's, um, it's fine guys like everyone yeah yeah. But um, that, yeah. the thing is as well, that's so not sales. It is. Like yeah. it, it always surprises me when I see like people posting up like really, really kind of like, even like the videos, as much as I love the videos, there are a couple of great ones, but like the way that I do it, like, so when I just did my little award, Sarah, a little award that we got, I had to do a video for it. And it was like, if someone is considering purchasing X, right? Like, what would you say to them? And I didn't say, oh, because it's fantastic. And this, I well, went, we hey, listen, we like, yet. No, I just said, listen, if, if you're experiencing some of these problems and I laid out a problem and I go, these are the problems that I was having. This is how it fixed it. If that resonates with you, then I would consider it. You know what I mean? Because that's sales. Like yeah. the moment people push back on things, like if you go and do, hey guys, this changed my life. It's the greatest thing I've ever done. Yada, 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 yada. People are like, all right. They just turn off and be like, man, I was so frustrated with the length of my calls and the and the enormity of my sales cycles. Mm. And NEPQ really helped me out with that. Yeah, well, it's- So it's, if you're struggling with that, give it a go. That itself is is branding, right? Because we are the guys- that reduce sales resistance. And some of the comments and stuff like that were completely opposite. They yeah. induce sales resistance, you know? Yeah. In, in but I, 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 I appreciate the enthusiasm, but it was oh, funny yeah. to see like, like it was funny, like that stuff doesn't change. Like if I post up in someone's Facebook group or I'm doing a recommendation for someone, I'm very, very deliberate with my language. It's very much mm. like, hey, if you're experiencing some of these problems and this might be worth considering for you. And then yeah. people are like, oh, okay. I'm experiencing those problems, you know, like it's mm. people relate to problems, not solutions. Right. So yeah. if you're like, man, I doubled my commissions. People are like, oh, I can't double my commissions. People are like, man, I was really struggling with consistency and my income was constantly up and down because I just didn't have a good sales structure. But NEPQ really helped me with that. So if you're struggling with your sales structure or inconsistencies in your income, then you should, then you should consider it. And people are like, and that's it, guys. Oh, uh, you know, it was a really interesting time. Yeah. It was very enjoyable. I learned a lot. I, yeah, Jeremy crushed it out of the park. So well done, Uncle Jay. And the team came together like I hadn't seen before. It was, mm. especially because like, they don't know this, but I'm going to pay them all commissions and bonuses, even though they didn't quote unquote make, make the, the sales. Sense. But like, they all like just 
went for it with the assumption that they wouldn't get paid for those sales mm, because they're awesome. all selling themselves, right? So it's like, they're just helping people. So it's like, unless they took the credit card detail, they're not getting that sale. You know what I mean? So it's like most of the people just bought themselves. So I was super proud of the team and I had, we went on a team meeting and I told them how, how like amazing it was like that. And I was like, I'm going to make sure you guys get paid. For it. We're not going to like everyone crushed it. Yeah. So super happy with them. But yeah, if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that kind of good stuff. If you guys want to know more about us, there's two places you can get us. One is the Closing Code Facebook group, okay, which is like coaching, consulting, entrepreneurs, like that kind of stuff. And then you've got the Sales Revolution group, which is the seventh level group. So if you're not another one of those, go and check them out. Uh, Jeremy goes live nearly every single day for sales coaching and training in the Sales Revolution group. We go live nearly every single day and do all kinds of training and guides and that kind of good stuff in the Closing Code Facebook group. And if you haven't checked out our website, salesniper.net, loads of free resources, loads of good stuff that you can go and get there. You can even download one of my live sales calls and a bunch of our internal SOPs. So you too can earn more money and earn more commissions. Thanks, guys. And thanks all right, guys. for listening. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs>